Okay. <clears throat> John 13, 36. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, where are you going? Jesus answered him, Where I am going, you cannot follow me now, but you shall follow me afterwards. That, of course, must have caused a lot of confusion for Peter, thinking in terms of earthly things, you know, he's going to Jerusalem or Nazareth or whatever, why couldn't I go? And yet, of course, from our standpoint, we uh, see Jesus is speaking about going to the cross, suffering and death, and, and uh, to be with his Father. And there's the promise for us that we'll be with him. Through that very act, we can be with him. Other thoughts on that? Well, I was going to finish with him. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Peter said to him, Lord, why can I not follow you now? I will lay down my life for your sake. Jesus answered him, Will you lay down your life for my sake? Most assuredly, I say to you, the rooster shall not crow till you have denied me three times. Well, with regard to that first verse, you know, it's rather, um, Jesus is being rather cryptic there, you know, of course. Lots of men sometimes try to purposely be cryptic to sound wise and smart or whatever, but Jesus simply can't explain any better. Um, I think back to all the things I, when I was a child, <laughs> you, you tried to tell me, and uh, I just didn't understand. And so, uh, here too, Jesus is, is talking about, you know, life after death, he's talking about going home to the Father, he's talking about heaven, it's just beyond our understanding, so he doesn't, doesn't even try. Um, but uh, as you were saying, the important thing is not where he's going um, or why, but uh, that we shall follow after, that Peter will be reunited with him. And that's the thing that Jesus laid down there, as you were saying, for Peter to grasp hold of and hang on to through the extremely difficult things uh, that were going to come. We see, of course, the lesson there in Peter in, in uh, learning to trust Jesus. He's explaining something that he probably knows Peter can't understand, like you said, and just gives him simple directions. And Peter's reaction is, well, I'll lay down my life. There's no place I can't go. And Jesus' warning is, you're going to deny me. So, Peter trusting in him in his own commitment rather than in God's strength to help him ends up falling. Right? Yeah. Yeah, if he had held on to that promise of Jesus instead. But, um, well, you know, and the other thing too there to remember is that I always remember that Peter was willing to lay down his life for Jesus' sake. Uh, Peter was that committed, but he wasn't willing <laughs> to wait. <laughs> he wasn't willing to suffer quietly. So, uh, yeah, that was the problem. He was ready to lay down his life for Jesus' sake. Uh, but when uh, Jesus asked him to put the sword away, wait patiently for Jesus' time to return and take Peter, uh, that's where Peter fell. Yeah. Should we pray? Okay. Or did you want to go on? No. Lord Jesus, we pray that you would strengthen our trust and reliance on you so that even when we may not understand what is, what is happening and what way you would have us go, we rely on your hand to guide and direct us. Go before us in our travels and prepare the way. Give us the words to speak, open doors to share your gospel. Bless the teaching of that word. Heavenly Father, we often want action, just like Peter did. We're willing to go out and fight and do things and be brave and heroic, but sitting around waiting. We want uh, to preach and crowds to applaud and follow us, shouting your name, but 
to preach every week to a small church, uh, work patiently and not see the results, that uh, is hard. That is uh, also what Peter had trouble with. So we, we pray that you would give us the strength to walk the course that you have set before us, to wait for your time and your salvation, uh, not to uh, seek the glory, not to be obsessed with the action and, and, and doing things, but to, uh, to wait and, and to walk quietly on your, in your word and, and by your side. Strengthen us uh, in all things to live according to your will. In Jesus' name we join to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I just remembered while we were praying, you know, just remind me of Elijah, too, who had to sit for all those years in the famine. <laughs> How frustrating that must have been for him uh, at the widow's house and he was sitting around. I mean, I don't know, why he's doing nothing, but it kind of sounds like that. Mm -hmm. uh, waiting for the Lord. So. <laughs>